So our conservation laws still hold true and allow us to look at the question, how am I able to speed up when there's no external force speeding me up? Well, we have to look at my inertia. Now rotational inertia is about location. My body mass isn't changing, but the location of my body mass changes. Check it out. As I'm moving in a circle with my mass way far from the axis, I have a relatively slow angular velocity. But as I pull myself in, I decrease my inertia and my angular velocity increases. Well, there it is. This demonstration is another super cool demonstration of angular momentum. Well, in this case, when I was just sitting on the chair and the wheel was spinning, all the momentum in the system was represented by the wheel itself. And so whatever momentum the wheel had is, the, is all the momentum contained in the system. And that includes me and the chair that I was sitting on. Now, when I inverted the wheel, when I inverted the wheel, I had to produce a torque. I had to cause this object to rotate around an axis horizontal here. But the torque was internal to the system. So if the torque is internal to the system, then momentum of the system must remain conserved. The, the torque what didn't come from outside, so the total momentum of the system must remain constant. Well, even though I when, I, when I got the wheel spinning like this and then inverted it, the momentum in the system remained constant at this magnitude. Just because I inverted the wheel didn't change the magnitude of the momentum of the wheel. So what we can see here is, what we can see here is that I changed the direction of momentum. Now momentum, as we've always defined, is a vector quantity. And when it comes to me sitting on a chair, here's the chair, here's me, okay, here's me holding a wheel, looking like that. Okay, now the wheel was originally rotating, if you were to look down on it, the wheel was originally rotating in this direction. So it was rotating in a clockwise direction if you were to look down on it. Now, this is a little bit out of our league. I don't, I don't want to explain too deeply this concept. But angular momentum is a concept that mathematically we're looking at the component of force or the component of momentum perpendicular to the radius. Well, there's a little trick in here that uses and introduces a concept called the right-hand rule. And the right-hand rule is a way of communicating the unique direction of that momentum. And what it says is that if you point your fingers along the radial component, if we just take, say, this point right here, this point right here on the wheel, if we point our fingers from the axis of rotation to that point and the wheel is rotating in this direction then we curl our fingers in the direction that the particle is moving at that point and we see that our thumb points in the direction perpendicular to the plane that the particle is moving in it's called a right hand rule well there's no real notes to, to this example so I just want you to kind of follow along but as we consider the rotation of the wheel, we see that the momentum of the wheel is up. Now by inverting it, by inverting the wheel, rotating the whole wheel 180 degrees, I now see that my momentum is down. So in the beginning, the initial momentum of the system we'll call simply positive L. Well, we'll just call it positive Li. There, okay? When we invert the wheel, we end up having a final momentum of equal to negative Li. So we've got this, we're showing that our momentum didn't change its magnitude, but it did change its direction. Now, 
in order to change the moment, the direction of momentum, a torque must be produced. And that's where that internal torque from me came from. Well, according to the conservation of angular momentum, we should be able to determine the consequence of why I moved. OK, so I changed the direction of the momentum. Big deal with an internal torque. Fine. But all of a sudden, I started moving in a circle. Whoa, how did that happen? I came, I started going in motion. Well, the idea is this. Because the torque was internal to the system and not external to the system, it was internal, the momentum of the system has to remain constant. Well, by me changing the direction of the momentum, I must rotate in a specific direction with a specific magnitude to account for and maintain that constant angular momentum. Check it out. In the beginning, we had a rotational inertia. Well, let's look at it from this point of view. Li equals Lf. We know in the beginning, in the absence of external torques, our torque was internal, these two values need to remain constant. So there were two objects here. I had the wheel inertia, initial, plus I had me and the chair. So me and the chair initial must equal the wheel final plus the angular momentum of me and the chair final. Well, in the beginning, there was no angular momentum of me and the chair. It was just the wheel. So in the beginning, it was just the wheel who demonstrated or reflected the angular momentum of the system. Well, in the end, we know that the final angular momentum of the wheel, after I flipped it, had a magnitude of negative L sub i. So negative Li. And that means that me and the chair had to respond to this change, this torque, in such a way as to maintain the conservation of momentum. And so by solving for the angular momentum of me and the chair, I end up adding this to this side. This was the initial velocity of the wheel. I end up having 2 times the initial velocity of the wheel. 2 times the initial velocity of the wheel. That had to be my angular momentum such that in the beginning, the initial velocity of the wheel was Lw sub i. And that's what it has to stay. But as soon as I flipped it, as soon as I flipped it, it, it suddenly had negative Lw sub i. But we have to maintain the conservation of momentum. And so if I add this momentum plus this momentum, you can see that I'm right back to a positive Lw sub i. So when in the absence of external torques, the momentum of the system must remain constant. And in order to maintain that, something else has to be in rotation with momentum to counter it. Wicked demonstration. These last two demonstrations are absolutely awesome. And they're based off of the conservation of momentum and the applications of them.